Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to our channel. The internet has blown with this new sensational true crime thriller on Netflix named The Watcher and today we will be discussing possible theories on what occurred at 657 Boulevard. Who was The Watcher? Was it the creepy neighbors, the owner themselves or was it something beyond the explaining capabilities of humans? Well, we will put it out all in the open and would also narrow it down to the most compelling ones both according to the show and in real life as it remains a true unsolved mystery. that the show seem to be building up to is that the watcher is a cycle. Each new owner is driven insane by the watcher which makes them obsess over the mystery of the house just enough to keep the nightmare alive for the next ones that will own it. At the end of the show, we find Dean waiting for the new neighbor, introducing himself as John and then waiting to leave until the new owner, Ben, looks at the movie. However, to assume this, we would have to take into account that just as a new family moved in, the person previously threatening discontinued and stopped obsessing, which could be a coincidence once or twice, but avoiding multiple letters from various watchers isn't possible every single time. The second theory surfacing in the show especially prominent in episode 5, where they constantly talk about a teenage girl appearing in Dean's bedroom caught on camera. However, this girl was not seen in any of the other camera footages. So where does she come from? Are there larger forces at play here? Now Dean claims that this girl is the same girl that was murdered in their house a few years ago by her own father John along with the rest of her family. That's when it becomes clear that they are hinting at it being a paranormal intervention. Even before this, throughout the first few episodes, they show sightings of people who disappear without a trace. But if you continue watching, they discover a secret tunnel that could be leading anywhere. It was also shown that someone was living below there, only to shift our focus to other possibilities. But we are sure you're wondering if those murders really took place. You will be shocked to learn that there actually did exist a person named John List who killed his entire family and himself went into hiding. The police, like in the show, took several weeks to finally notice and find their bodies. However, according to the facts, this didn't exactly happen at 657 Boulevard, but in very close proximity. Now the two most general yet believable and logical ideas that have been essentially brought up both in the show and otherwise are that it could have been someone playing a prank or someone who wanted to buy the place for themselves at a lower value. These two scenarios were definitely investigated among other more compelling ones but no hard evidence was found. This brings us to the last couple of theories once we are sure you must have thought of and are probably still debating upon. They did it to themselves. This could again have two very specific reasons, both nothing short of a mastermind. First, to get out of the financial misery that this house had brought upon them. And instead of being able to confront one another, this couple plays with the minds of their better half. This particular theory holds a lot of weight as the mini-series on Netflix, The Watcher in episode 4, Dean accepts sending one of those letters. So who's to say they didn't send the other? Even when you will compare the real-life events, you will find that the brothers filed suit against the previous owners, probably hoping to earn a profit that way. They could have easily made this whole thing up and to make it look more convincing, sent one letter to another neighbour around the same time and the previous owners just before they were about to move into the house. Considering the previous residents in the past two decades of living there never once received such a letter. 
The second extremely unavoidable angle is where they do it to create the mystery and get the publicity. Being far sighted enough to get story rights and be the main attraction for every news piece or any other mention of this event, making big bucks from it and living the best life possible. Although all things considered, this seems plausible in actuality as the family had not really moved into the house, unlike the show where everyone witnessed the trauma first hand. So this might seem like the best answer when it comes to real life scenario, but for the real life, it doesn't look like the top theory. Before moving on to the last theory, we would like to make it absolutely clear that these are merely speculations and there is no way we can ascertain what really occurred. Even then, we have tried to come up with the best possible explanations for the events that took place. And if you like this video, please subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon for latest updates. Moving on, the last very eminent contributing factor are the neighbours. As stated in several news articles, there was a particular neighbour named Michael Lanford who was a prime suspect for quite some time. The true owner, Derek Prodis, was highly doubtful of him because of several reasons. One being that the Langford's house had a direct view of the part of the house mentioned in the letters. It was also revealed that Michael was diagnosed with schizophrenia as a child and it was only their family that had been living there since the 1960s which increased the broader suspicion. We are not completely aware of what went down but he was ruled out after no concrete evidence was found. The Netflix series also focuses on the neighbours quite a lot. In fact, they are as creepy as they come. Their architecture preservation society was more like a cult and being ran by Pearl, it definitely looked shady. Her brother Jasper surely knew more than he was letting on and they were both in on the whole setup with John, the guy who murdered his entire family. Unfortunately, they never uncovered in the series if it really was him but it doesn't change the consensus on Pearl and Jasper. Joined by the other neighbour, Mo and Mitch, who would sit and stare endlessly at 657 Boulevard, very much aligns to those with psychopathic tendencies. The similarity between two events and the series is extremely gripping and daunting. The true watcher was also keen on preservation of the house and there is also a mention of neighbours who would do nothing but eye the goddess's house for hours. The inspiration for characters might have been real, but what makes the neighbours seem so ominous and such convincing suspects in the show is their flawless acting and attention to detail. We would have to say without a doubt that this seems like the top theory for the Watcher series. This being one of the big unsolved mysteries, there is no telling who was responsible or what other bizarre theories might still be out there. Well, whatever it might be, we will leave it for our watchers to decide what according to them is the one. Comment down below to share your opinions with us.